we were tipped off that this female volleyball game that we witnessed earlier featured not one, not two, not three, not four, but five men pretending to be females. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I have another story from Canada concerning the volleyball over there, the girls volleyball in the schools. And we have five transgender athletes. I mean, at this point, I don't even know if they're transgender, to be honest. We have five male athletes who are competing in women's volleyball, dominating women's volleyball in the schools. And we have Rebel News confronting the coaches, the school, and asking why? How on earth is this fair? How on earth is this safe? We saw what happened to Peyton. She testified in Congress about it, advocating for Title IX to actually apply to women, <laughs> advocating for lawmakers to define what a woman is so that we can ensure that Title IX actually applies to women and doesn't somehow work against women and allow males to compete in women's sports. Allowing biological males to compete against biological females is dangerous. A Cherokee County student said that she was injured after she was struck in the face by a ball that was spiked by an alleged transgender student. And now her voice has contributed to newly passed North Carolina legislation. This is the moment where high school senior Peyton McNabb says she got a concussion and neck injury. She says the Highlands High School student with a powerful spike was born a male but playing on the women's team. I may be the first to come before you with an injury, but if this doesn't pass, I won't be the last. On Wednesday, McNabb testified at the North Carolina Legislative Building in favor of North Carolina's Fairness in Women's Sports Act that would ban girls who identify as transgender from participating on female sports teams. The bill passed in the state house. Other injuries I still suffer from today include impaired vision, partial paralysis on my right side, constant headaches, as well as anxiety and depression. Peyton's father, who is also the principal of her school, said on Facebook, quote, Peyton and our family had a tremendous opportunity yesterday to take a stand for what is right. I personally think that this is something that should have not even become an issue, but I am so proud of Peyton and the great representatives from the North Carolina General Assembly House of Representatives. But some say what happened on this volleyball court should it become a political issue? Are we really going to politicize more children's identity? Leave them alone. Let her compete. Let her live her life. Let her be a child. Hamilton County Democratic Chair Rachel Campbell says sports comes with injuries. She believes it's not fair that this is playing out in the national spotlight without the other player's side. You should need to hear from the other side. Um, but the likelihood is, is this student who is trans or is allegedly transgender um, probably won't want to come forward given the hate that is being spewed. In Cherokee County, Leslie Dominique reporting. And we want to be very clear about one specific part of this story. Neither the school where the other athlete attends nor the North Carolina High School Athletic Association would confirm to us that the student is transgender. So over in Canada, obviously they have the same issue. And what I want you to notice is how people respond to being asked simple questions. They are of the mindset that if a man says that he's a woman, he's a woman, that's it. They're not even male anymore. The egregious state of affairs of the game was spectacular for all the wrong reasons. Namely, the male players excelled, as you would expect, in serving and spiking. We saw it with their own eyes and now they're changing this. Hey coach, coach. Coach, why, why are you playing male players? Coach, why are you playing male players? I'm not. Well, they are, they're male, they're biological males. Why are you doing that? What happened to chivalry? It's not that in my huh? Well, that was the coach and he's got no problem with this. And I kind of understand it. I guess as a coach, you want to win regardless of the tactics used. I guess cheating is the way you do it. Seneca beat Centennial. Seneca has three men on their team. Centennial has only two. Clearly we know why Seneca won. Um, Centennial was just outmanned, literally outmanned. They magically become females, apparently. I don't even think you have to be trans anymore, to be honest. 
I really don't. I don't think you have to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria. I don't think you have to meet any requirements. These volleyball players don't. They don't have to meet any requirements. One was competing on the boys team last year. You've got five players already taking spots that belong to women and endangering the women who have made the teams and have shown up to play in good faith. And at least two now have suffered concussions. And as I read your report, David, there's one, one of the men who caused a concussion as recently as January 22nd is named Franz Lagardis. You report that mm. during a game at Seneca College versus La Cité Collegiate, he attacked the ball with heavy force and hit an opposing player in the head. This guy last year was on the men's team. Literally yep. last year. Here he is. And this is his, his team photo last year. We actually pulled his last year photo. And now here his, is his picture while he's on the women's team this year. Take a look. Nothing. They don't pose it. They don't post it because they don't want us to know it's a dude. It's it's amazing, Megan, but it's deja vu, isn't it? Uh, we covered last year uh, the fiasco that was um, Ash Davis, real name Tommy, uh, playing on the Fergus women's rugby team. Um, and the year before that, uh, just like this fellow, uh, he was on a male team and voted the hardest hitter on the men's Fergus team. This is absolutely ridiculous. What we say that we should not allow males to compete in women's sports, even if they are trans, even if, you know, they have a, a mental disorder where they believe they're in the wrong body and all of that. When you say that they can therefore compete in women's sports, when you say that they are women, when you even say they're female, as long as you go along with that, it just opens the door for any man to come into women's sports and cheat and crush the women. And this is a safety concern above everything else. This is a clear safety concern. Peyton is still dealing with the consequences of having a transgender athlete lob the ball at her and hit her directly on the face. She was knocked out cold and it ruined her, her volleyball career, her, her hopes and dreams, her aspirations to take it a step further. It ruined it. We talk about inclusion, but we allow trans athletes to come into women's sports and literally take a woman out, take her out of the sport completely. So let's read about it. Five biological men dominated a college women's volleyball game in Canada between Seneca Polytechnic and Centennial College, leaving actual women to sit on the benches as their peers got massive playtime. Unsurprisingly, video of the game shows the trans players enjoying massive strength and size advantages over the actual women they were competing against. The league reportedly hosts at least six trans players which prompts the question, why even pretend to have women's competitions in most sports at this point? So they wrote, leave it at two divisions, both for biological men and let the female athletes do the cheerleading and serve lemonade. Well, I mean, in this game, apparently a lot of the female athletes were sat on the bench. They may as well be serving lemonade. That's the ultimate logic of push for justice. Teach women their place on the bench. The fact that both colleges field the trans athletes show they know such players have massive advantages in most women's sports. And this is where we're at. And it appears that coaches go along with this because they want to win. So when that coach said to you, we're not playing biological men on these teams, he was lying. He, he's, he's of the trans women are women that's it that's the tweet field of thinking indeed megan and i get it you know you're a varsity level college coach what do you want to do like every coach you want to win by any means necessary including cheating and make no mistake that's what this is and i'll tell you megan um this is verifying my prediction that i kind of made in jest just a couple of years ago but it's actually coming true i think unless we put an end to this madness in our lifetime we will see varsity level teams um all around the western world uh where you'll have the men's team that will be the men's a team and then you'll have the men's b team those will consist 
of all the loser males that couldn't make the A team. So the men's B team will be that team that once upon a time was known as the women's team. It's yeah. an absolute disgrace. I mean, we had one feminist, Ava, over in the UK, suggest that the women who had Leah Thomas on their team should have been grateful. So she's acknowledging that, yes, Leah Thomas had an unfair advantage, but if Leah's on your team, that's wonderful. You should be happy. <laughs> this is the logic that we're dealing with today. And some of this is coming from so-called feminists. Explain to me why this isn't just insane, that Leah Thomas, who, as we just heard, was not just the tallest boy in her college when she was competing as a biological male, but the, obviously the tallest girl as well. How can any of this be fair? I think, OK, so this is a really interesting topic for someone who is gender critical, because on this show before, we have discussed puberty blockers and whether children should be allowed access to them when they are 12, 13 mm -hmm. years of age. Now, boys develop when they are 12, 13. The second that they start to have testosterone, that is when they, they, they grow bigger, they have mm -hmm. a larger muscle mass than women. If you don't want to see trans women competing in women's sports, mm. then you're going to have to allow young children who do not feel, who are experiencing gender dysphoria, to have those drugs when they're younger. No, not at all. You are. In, in my estimation, otherwise... you do one of two things. It's very straightforward. This whole supposed insolvable problem is very straightforward. Trans women either compete against other trans women in an entirely new category, well, as, there are more and more of the, as there are more and more of them competing, or they compete against their biological sex mm -hmm. because that is the biology they've been born with. Tell me why that's not fair. I don't think it's fair that people who've experienced gender dysphoria when they're growing up and don't feel that they are in the right body should not be allowed to compete in sports. And if you're going to take away oh, their why rights... Why don't you care? Look, you, 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 love, you go on about women's rights, and a lot of the time I agree with you. I want women to enjoy utter fairness and equality. I think this how is can, fair. How can you possibly sign up to something that is so grotesquely unfair and unequal because Leah to Thomas, women's rights. Because Leah Thomas didn't wake up one morning and suddenly decide, I'm going to be able to win in the women's category, so I'm going to That's switch. exactly what she's no, that's doing. Not, that's not what happened. That's what she's doing. Leah Thomas, it, she, is, she is a woman, and so she is competing as a woman. She's a trans woman. She is a woman. She's a trans woman. We can go back and forth on She's this. a trans woman born with a biological male body, which gives her an immediate massive advantage so, over women who weren't. So why aren't other members of her team happy that they're finally winning and qualifying for all of the things that they never qualified because before. they can all see that it's unfair. Is it not a little bit of jealousy? No, it's just they know that at some stage, Leah Thomas is going to probably win the Olympic gold medal. Oh no, that and would be awful for America. Yeah, that would be, be terrible. It would be Paula Scallon, who speaks out in support of women's sports, she had Leah Thomas on her team. And she says that although she didn't speak out as soon as Riley Gaines did, she knew it was wrong. And it works against female athletes. Even if the male athlete is on your team, it still works against you. Because what happens when you have to directly compete against a male athlete? What happens when you have to have that person in your locker room? If they're on your team, they're going to be in your locker room. And that's not right. And we had some women speaking about how it was triggering. Paula even testified to that in Congress. How it was triggering because of what some of them have been through in the past. Having dealt with assault in the past. And now a male is literally invited into their locker room. That the male players were always on the court. So you had biological female substitutes just sitting on the bench for the entire game. You right think we're very... This topic, though, and why are you filming me? You don't have my permission. Uh, we don't need your permission. Okay, we're in a public so space. Why are you talking to me, then? Uh, well, you came to oh, us, no, actually. You came to me. Uh, no, no, you came to us. Why are you disrespectful, then? Huh? Why are you being disrespectful? I, well, why are you being transphobic, huh? Why? No, 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 no. Oh, am I being transphobic? Can you, can why? You shut up! Why? Oh, wow. Answer my question. Did okay. we trigger you? No, you didn't trigger Are me. Are you trans too? Do I look trans to you? Uh, who knows these days? Okay, so why are you What about you characters? Then? How about you guys? No comment. I hope you can go rot in hell, you f***ing wife. Wow. What happened to Love Trump's hate? So you heard there. There's your inclusion. There's your tolerance. He just held a racist comment at him for asking questions. That's what a lot of these people seem to resort to hate, anger, and in many cases, violence. This is what they resort to when you simply ask, how on earth is it fair to have a male athlete competing in women's sports? How is it fair for young girls to be on the bench, standing there waiting to be given a shot 
while the male athletes dominate in their sport. <laughs> <laughs> What? You own this place? Oh, did we trigger you? Okay, okay. okay. Did, 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 I don't give a fucking woman that's vagina. I don't give a fucking vagina. Did we trigger you, sir, or ma'am? Okay, first of all, I wasn't talking to you, so shut your up. And you, well, I don't care if you. Wow. Okay. Well. Wow. 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 Sir, are you, are you suffering from mental illness? Sir, why would you want to uh, strike a biological female? Yeah. You guys watching this? Can you believe this? You have men pretending to be females playing volleyball with real females. Does, does anyone want to weigh in on this? No, everyone's taking the silent treatment. Wow, look at this threesome. More, more proof that there's ample mental illness in this community, I should think. Yeah, I think so. Why do you have to be? Uh, why do you have to use profanity, sir? Huh? Why do you have to use profanity, ma'am? I don't give a f about what I'm about to say. Okay. Okay. So get the f out of this building. Wait. Oh, are you the owner, sir? Or ma'am? First of all, <laughs> don't come for David. It never works in their favor. In all of these exchanges I've seen, it never works in their favor. But the actual disrespect to be speaking to somebody like that, an older person, a member of the press who's there to report. And this person thinks they have the right to speak to someone like that. I was there with my camera woman, Avery, and that fellow, and I don't know what he is. Maybe he's trans, maybe he's pansexual, whatever. He was, he wanted to slug my camera woman. And he was saying something very telling, uh, which was just because you have a vagina, does that, do you think that's what makes you female? And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the benchmark. <laughs> if you but were born with it, right sure. Now. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that whole situation is a complete and utter circus. Is this supposed to be sports? An absolute chaotic circus. It's a joke. And this is what you have turned women's sports into. A spectacle. An absolute spectacle. These young women, they train. They expect to compete and be rewarded for their hard work, whether that's winning, whether that's just participating, whether that's getting a personal best or something, or progressing even further. Instead, they have been exposed to all of this. And the sporting bodies who allow this, they have turned their sport into a joke. Women's sports fights to be taken seriously enough as it is. Women have fought to be taken seriously in the first place. And now this is where we're at. And this is supposed to be progressive. This is supposed to be advancing women's sports in some way. Nobody can tell me that this is advancing women's sports. This is setting us back and this is making women objects of ridicule. And let's get back to the severity of the situation. And let's remind ourselves how serious this actually is and what this can lead to. So in all seriousness, this is a safety concern and that's what they fail to recognize. And the one thing that people are not talking about, when you're preparing for a match or preparing to compete in any way, you're very nervous. And it's perfectly natural to have that adrenaline, perfectly natural. But now female athletes have to prepare themselves to compete against males. They don't know whether they're gonna get hurt. They don't know how they can match this person's strength and ability. And that's added pressure that has been put upon them. It's one thing to worry about injuries when you're competing against somebody of the same sex. And I don't really think people even think about it, except for maybe certain sports where it's particularly dangerous. I don't think people think about it. But when you're competing against a man, I can imagine that that's at the forefront of your thoughts. Am I going to get hurt? So here, Peyton McNabb explains what she went through knowing that she had to compete against a team that had a male. So did you, were you at all afraid going into this match or did you feel like I'm, I'll, it'll be fine? I was afraid. I was, um, I know a lot of the girls were, I was just kind of used to it because it was my fourth year, but I knew all the younger players, they were really scared, but they just knew that they had to play. So what happened in the game when you got hurt? Walk us through the moment. 
So um, I was hit and everything went black. Um, my teammates and coaches said I was unconscious for about 30 seconds. While my team was huddling around me, the opposing team was laughing. Um, but when I came back to consciousness, a trainer took me to the sidelines and checked me for a concussion and told me I was fine and could go back in. But luckily, my coach didn't let me go back in. I guarantee you the person who said she can go back in didn't want to face the reality that she was actually injured. Oh, you know, this happens all the time. There's no big deal. Half the time, they're not willing to face the consequences of allowing this. They don't want to face the reality. And it's going to take something catastrophic, even more catastrophic, occurring for them to be forced to face up to the dangers of allowing a male to compete against girls. Talk about your recovery, because, you know, you get hurt in sport, you think, okay, that was unfortunate, and then you kind of move on. You, you were not able to really just move on. No, I, I was out for the rest of my volleyball season. Um, I came back, like, halfway through my basketball, or a little bit in my basketball, but it wasn't the same as it has been the last three years. And I was really, I just wasn't playing like I used to. Um, but healing has been really slow. I've been trying to heal and take my time with it so I can get 100% back. But it's hard because, you know, I want to still do things and um, have fun and stuff. So what are the lingering effects? This happened in September, this past September. Now here we are chatting at the end of April. What are the lasting effects from what happened to you? I have impaired vision, so I have to, I had to get my glasses uh, redone. I have partial paralysis on my right side, so my right side lags slightly. Um, I, I have really bad headaches and, but not as bad, but they just, they've getting, they're getting better, but, uh, I do have bad headaches. I have to have accommodations at school and test in separate rooms and get extra help when that's never been a problem before and just different things like that. So how has this affected you emotionally? It has given me, um, I was really depressed. I had a really long depressive episode and I have anxiety now um but you know I'm I'm trying to get better from it but it has affected me you know mentally and emotionally what were you feeling depressed about it was it was just really sad because this is my last year and it was nothing like I imagined it was going to be everything changed I can't do things that you know, I've had no problem doing in the past. And it just was really hard for me to accept. Did the person who hurt you ever reach out to you and say, my God, I'm so sorry? They did reach out about a week ago um, for the first time ever. And there was no remorse. It wasn't an apology or anything. It was kind of just a little hateful comment, but that's... That's the only time they've directly reached out to me. Just hearing it come from her mouth is, um, you know, I don't even know what to say. It's just shocking that any young woman has been through this because of schools bowing to gender ideology. No young woman should have to go through that. In her final year, with all her hopes and dreams, all her excitement of moving into her future, she had to go through that. For what? And then to say that the person doesn't sound remorseful, even, you know, sent her a hateful comment, it's just absolutely disturbing to me. And coaches, schools, sporting bodies, they are enabling this, they are encouraging it. All at the expense of the safety and the health of women, the health of young girls. Now with Canada, from what I've heard, the consequences of speaking against this whole fiasco are worse, legally. You're not allowed to speak against somebody's gender identity. You're not allowed to deny somebody's gender identity. It was essentially written into their law there by Trudeau. And that's why people stand there in stunned silence, afraid 
to say what they really think. So this is an infringement of their freedom of speech, number one, and it puts them in fear of backlash. It puts them in fear of losing their job, of getting in trouble legally for saying that this is wrong. So that might explain why we have people there afraid to state the obvious. And one thing that I always think about are the parents. Why are the parents allowing their daughters to participate in sports against males, against biological men? The parents need to pull their kids out of these competitions and these men need to compete by themselves. That will send a clear message that there's not going to be any female sports, any women's sports without women. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.